All right, guys, what's up? Um, if you've been keeping up with MTG Arena at all lately, uh, you should know that there was a big patch that came out yesterday, December 13th, um, that made a lot of changes to the matchmaking system, the ranked system, um, and like just some kind of user interface things like the phase ladder um, and stuff like that. Now, some other streamers and YouTubers have made videos on this. Uh, I know Professor Knox has made one, and I think Merchant also made one. Um, but both of those were like 30 minutes, I think. So I wanted to do one that's pretty quick and kind of addresses um, my questions that I had when I started playing after this patch. Uh, so first, we're going to go and talk about the, um, the rank breakdown. Um, so... Here's how uh, rank works. So there's a new ranking system that actually uh, makes a difference. The the patch has been, uh, this new patch has been kind of called the Rank Matters patch uh, because now, as whereas before it was like, the, what the frick is the ranking system doing? It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It, I lose way more rank whenever I lose a game than I do when I win a game. And so it just doesn't make any sense. I can't actually climb and it doesn't even do anything it's not even used for the matchmaking system because i'm playing people outside of my rank um now the rank does matter partly because there's going to be seasons um and for this preseason, they have reward structures where if you end the season in the bronze rank you get one pack if you end in silver you get a pack and 500 gold if you end in gold it's two packs and a thousand gold uh, platinum is three packs and a thousand gold. Diamond is four packs. Mythic is five packs and a thousand gold. And really, these rewards aren't that much if you think about it. Like, in order to actually reach the mythic rank, you would have to play a ton. And on your way there, you're going to win these rewards like several times over. You should at least. Um, and so, these are, it's kind of negligible uh, compared to like the rewards you get from entering events and doing well in those. So uh, I don't really see, like, I mean, I see the point in it for sure. I see the point in rewarding people for playing more because it does take time to, to play and climb the ranks. Um, but it's also not that big of a reward. Like, the differences between bronze and silver is literally 500 gold. You get that by completing a daily quest. So um, it's not that big of a deal, to be, to be honest. Um, but here's how you climb ranks. I was a little bit confused about this yesterday when I started playing because I noticed that when I would win games, I would go up two steps in bronze, and when I lost a game, I wouldn't go down at all. And I was like, that can't be right, because if I just kept on playing a bunch, I would eventually just get to the top rank. But there's a reason for this. So uh, they lay it out here in a little table where it shows you how many steps needed to advance a tier, and then how many steps you gain each time you win, and how many steps you lose each time you lose a game. Um, and so in the bronze rank, which is the one you start in, obviously, it's the lowest, um, you gain two steps every time you win a game, and so it takes two wins to go up a tier in bronze. And I don't remember how many tiers there are. Um, each rank has four tiers, with tier one being the best tier within that rank. So uh, when you lose a game, you don't lose anything. So it's really easy to climb out of bronze and into silver, but once you get into silver, it takes a more games to climb a tier, so it takes five steps, and you gain two steps with each win, and you lose one with each loss. So once you're in silver, your losses count. And so, um, it, again though, your your wins count more, and so it's fairly easy to climb out of silver, um, but it does take a little bit more time because of the, the added steps to climb out. However, once you get to gold, and gold and up, basically gold, platinum, and diamond, you gain one step with each win and one loss with each loss, or you lose one step with each loss. And so it's basically like you have to be... You have to continue to win in order to climb. You have to win like at a pretty high rate if you want to climb quickly. Because um, if you were to win, like if you were to win every game and go from tier four to tier to the next, uh, so all the way through four tiers, that's twenty four steps. That would take twenty four wins once you get to gold to go from the bottom of gold into platinum. And that's if you never lost a game. Because every time you lose a game, you're you're stepping back a, a step. Right, and so it's going to take you a lot of playing to actually climb out of, like, climb from bottom of gold up through gold into platinum, and then the same in platinum and diamond because they add another step for each tier. Um, however, you, the obviously the rewards are higher. So they have here they show you the rewards. If you actually make it into the mythic tier, I guess mythic is above diamond, 
it doesn't show i guess once you're into mythic it's like grandmasters in overwatch or or whatever that is um that means uh what does it say in mythic you'll be able to see what percentile among mythic players you're in or what rank you are numbers one to number a thousand if you're in the top 1000 mythic players note that your percentile or rank can go up or down after each game and even when you are not logged in due to the games of other players Currently, this will only be presented to you when you complete a ranked game, but we are planning to show it everywhere your rank is displayed in a future release. So this is pretty cool. So once you climb to Mythic, you know that you are in the top certain percent of players, and you can actually track where you are relative to other Mythic level players. Um, and while I say that is really cool, it will take you a long, long time to play to actually play enough games to climb all the way to Mythic, because you've got to go through. You've got to go through bronze, which doesn't take very long. I did it this morning in like, uh, I don't know. It took me maybe like two hours, maybe less, probably less than that. Actually, I don't remember. I didn't track it, but I'm in silver now um, and climbing fairly easily because the competition isn't as steep as it's going to be once you climb out of that. And you also like every time you win a game, you're moving up twice. And every time you lose a game, you're only stepping down one step. So that's pretty nice. Um, explaining the seasons, we've got, as of the December 13th update, ranks have been reset and all players will start at Bronze Tier 4, okay? Um, currently, it's in a preseason. We're starting off in what we're calling a preseason from the 13th to January 31st. We want to measure how players are proceeding through the ranking system and make sure everything's working how we hope it will with rank, with rank progression and matchmaking in order to make sure players are being matched quickly and against the best opponents we can find for them. Um... And there is the question of why we're starting with the best of one for ranked. Um, and I actually had that question too, because in competitive, you you don't have, currently you don't have the option of playing ranked and competitive, where you're playing best of three. Um, and so uh, over the quarter of the over quarter billion games played on MTG Arena since open beta, 97% have been in best of one games. We're looking at this to op ex we're, sorry, we're looking at this as an opportunity to expand the breadth of competitive magic, provide a competitive scene for MTG Arena that is familiar to the majority of our audience, and put the ranking system through the largest volume of games we can. Now, I will say that probably part of the reason um, that 97% of games have been in best of one is because in the events, like in the draft events and sealed events and things like that, it costs a lot more to enter into a competitive event where you're playing best of threes and and the the rewards are not as good for those like relative to what you're paying to get in and so i feel like they haven't incentivized uh the competitive part or like the best of three games very well because also if you're playing best of ones you can finish your daily quest and you can gain more cards you can build your collection faster and so for the majority of people like me who aren't spending a ton of money and just buying packs or buying into events all the time you're just playing best of one games to get or like playing ladder games to get uh get the, the gold the gold it gives you as reward and get cards out of it um so it makes sense that 97 percent have been in best of one games it's just easier to say oh, i'll play a couple games i'll get into a best of one uh win and then play again and again and again and, and it's just quick and easy it doesn't require like a lot of time sideboarding and a lot of like stress of ooh, i've got to like really plan but like for serious players i can see why you um would play competitive or best of three and i want to play best of three um but right now they're not incentivizing it very well so i'm hoping after the preseason they'll make a ranked for uh for competitive and a ranked for best of ones uh, but but we'll see how that develops as they as they go and as they um uh, adjust things um there's also ranked like there's ranks for uh draft events so currently there's ranked dominaria draft um, and i'll be getting into that some soon and checking out the rank system my problem with that is that it requires you to pay uh gold or pay gems to get into those ranked events and so climbing that those ranks um is going to be a little more difficult because you actually have to put currency in-game currency into it um so uh that's that part let's uh go look at the matchmaking breakdown so um they've changed up a few things with the matchmaking system and to start thing off, start things off here's a breakdown of the various systems we have at our disposal that can be used as part of our matchmaking system your rank your win-loss record within a certain event your player matchmaking rating and your deck 
and the games played. Um, while it might go without saying, we don't use all of those weights in all of our formats. Case in point, the only time rank matters um, in our matchmaking system is when you're playing a ranked event. Other weights, such as the amount of games played, are situational. Below, we break down each of our event types, the systems they used prior to this update, and any changes we've made with the December update. Uh, so the changes to the MMR. Uh, we want to take some time to explain what we mean when we say matchmaking rating. Um, the matchmaking rating is their way of trying to ensure that you face the best possible opponent at any given time. Okay, well I want to see uh, what specific changes have happened. Let's see, when you're just playing best of one, and I think this means not ranked, yeah, we're adding a new unranked best of one format to replace our previous ladder play option. This event will primarily look at one of the new MMR categories we've des designated to be used specifically for unranked events, open play MMR. Um, so it matches you based on your player matchmaking rating, and I think your deck probably uh, goes into account, yeah. Again, this is, does replace the previous play option, which used a combination of deck weight plus MMR for matchmaking, um, and game results affected your constructed rank. For those of you looking for a ranked option without deck weighting, keep reading. So ranked best of one, uh, players will be matched based on their rank with a secondary look at their constructed MMR. Uh, so this, I don't think, takes into account your your deck, your deck's weight, or your deck's MMR, I guess, because they assign a specific power to your deck based on the cards that are in it and based on its like synergy and whatnot. So ranked won't use deck weight or games played as part of your matchmaking or as part of matchmaking. And instead, we'll primarily be matching players based on, you guessed it, rank. For the first preseason, all the tiers within a rank will be weighted equally for the purpose of matchmaking. For example, bronze three carries the same weight as bronze one. So yeah, if you're in the bronze, you're going to be playing bronze players. Um, and if you're in silver, you're gonna be playing silver players. I actually think earlier when I was like at the top of bronze, I played a silver uh, player, but I think the difference between like the MMR between a bronze player and a silver player is not that much of a difference because it doesn't take that long to climb into silver. And it's like kind of difficult to drop back into bronze. So I think they're not super concerned with that at the lower ranks, but like once you get into gold and platinum, I think you will probably only be facing opponents uh, that are the same rank as you. Uh, with ranked draft, this is something I wanted to learn a little bit about. So the current system is a uh, win-loss record, and then you have rank, your win-loss record, and your limited MMR. So with ranked draft, we will be trying out something new by adding ranking that matters to our limited offerings. The primary matching metrics will be the player's rank and win-loss record with a secondary look at their limited MMR to double check that the pairing is a good matchup. This does mean that as players increase in rank, they will face more challenging opponents, but it also means that players looking to enter into limited for the first time are more likely to be paired against opponents at their skill level. We'll be watching how this plays out closely, but we believe it will be a large benefit to the game as a whole. So that's actually, <coughs> sorry, that's actually really good to hear uh, because I felt like of course, whenever you're drafting, like each player has kind of has access to the same level of cards, so your decks should be a pretty similar like deck weight uh, because it's because you're drafting, and so um, I felt like that was always fairly even. But also, I would uh, before when the rank didn't really matter, I found myself uh, facing up against people when I was like limited bronze because I never played limited and so I never actually climbed the ranks I would be facing people that were like platinum or diamond and I also I still found that, that didn't make a whole lot of difference in terms of competition like I could just as easily beat those people in limited because of the inconsistency of how those decks play and how those decks actually how you actually draft those decks um but it is good to hear that they're they're like taking uh like that the rank in uh, limited is actually going to be important. Um, I'm not going to continue to read all of these uh, because there's a lot of different uh, events. I guess in special events, they're not going to really be doing anything. I guess it's just win-loss record for those types of events. So for now, we're going to keep it that way. So that's nice to hear. Um, I'm also not going to go into the the phase ladder breakdown. They've adjusted the way the phase ladder looks. If you want to see what that is, just go play a game and uh, 
check that out. I actually don't like it. I preferred when I knew for sure what, like when I didn't have to look really closely at what I was passing priority to. Um, but anyway, that's all I've got to talk about. I think it's these are some really good changes, and um, I think it comes out of a mindset from Wizards of the Coast that they want uh, MTG Arena and like digital Magic the Gathering to be one of like their main sources of of their player base or like one of the the primary ways their players interact with the game and interact with the cards and um wizards of the coast in general and i think they're uh, the new the push for um more a more competitive magic scene with like all the more all the money they're putting into magic uh in the in 2019 is is really cool and i think this this uh, patch is is kind of has its eye set on the competitive scene in, for 2019. So what is it going to be like? How are we going to figure out who the best players in MTG Arena are? Um, and I think they're they're actually doing a good job of that right now. We'll see how the ranked system goes um, over the next little while. But I just wanted to make a little video, kind of explaining it um, and having myself look into it a little more deeply because I wasn't 100% clear on it myself. Um, Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like this video um, and you want to see more content like it, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and check back for more soon. Thanks for watching.